It's about 30 degrees outside. This has got to be one of the dumbest ideas I've ever had. Okay, let's back up a bit. A couple of years ago, I was finishing my basement. It was the winter and I had to paint my baseboards and my molding for the doors. I didn't want to do it inside because spray painting inside without uh, the proper place is just not right. So I did it in my garage. However, I live in Utah. So in the middle of winter, my garage, even my garage was 35, 40 degrees, if not less. So I spray painted these and in, within a few minutes of spray painting, they started to crinkle and the water in the paint froze much faster than the actual paint did that made these really cool designs. And last week I decided, you know what? You know it would be a cool, crazy experiment? Let's do a paint pour outside. So this is how we did it. Sorry for the lighting, it's not the best here in my kitchen, but I made up these paints inside because if the paints get cold too fast, they won't even pour out. I won't be able to tilt them off the canvas. So we're leaving the paint inside until I actually do the pour. My paint is one part Floetrol, one part glue all here. Uh, these are the three colors that I'm using along with white, Master's Touch. And I have my blue, white. This one is ocean green and this is gray, but it's just like an off-white gray. And we're going to do a, a dirty cup and then just a straight pour on the canvas because I need to get it on the canvas and get it tilted before it gets too cold or else the paint's not going to move. I'm doing a 10 by 10 canvas here. 10 by 10, 100 square inches plus the 10 inches for each side is 120 square inches. That's about 5 ounces of paint that I need to use. If you want the link to how much paint to use, I will put it in the bubble above and the website article about how to calculate paint for your pour in the description below. So we're going to pour all of our white in first. And I think I'm going to do the gray. As you can see, this is very thin. Uh, it barely makes a mound and then disappears. And just to show you how cold outside it is, West Jordan outside of Salt Lake City, right now, 30 degrees. All right, so let's grab my canvas and my paint. We're gonna jog outside here. Again, it's about 30 degrees outside. This has got to be one of the dumbest ideas I've ever had for a paint pour. All right, so here's my paint. I apologize for the sound outside. I live next to a pretty busy road, but we're just gonna do a straight pour like I mentioned. This way first. I can already feel the paint is just getting super thick.
kind of a cool little backdrop with the snow there. Let us check out how this changes as it gets colder. So here's what it looks like now. Nice little waves. Got some cellular action happening there from the flow trawl. And some cool little effects happening there. If I turn it upside down, it kind of looks like a mountain. So we're gonna let it sit out here for 10 minutes and then check it out again. So I don't know how well you can see that, but it's totally starting to freeze on the corner there. And it looks really cool. Just gradually pulling itself out from the sides. All right, it's been another 10 minutes or so. And the middle here, you can kind of see the, the striations that are happening there. Especially right, about right here. That is freezing. It started freezing from the outside, or from the center, and freezing outward, which is really cool. All right, it's been about 20 minutes since I poured and the wind is starting to pick up. And I know it's kind of hard to see, but you have to look at it in the glare. You can see all the little icicles that it's making. It almost looks like a huge um, snowflake. But it didn't, uh, if you saw the paint from earlier in the video, it didn't get nearly that uh, wrinkled. But that's kind of cool, kind of a cool pour. In the cold, my hands are getting to be the same color as the paint that I have on them. It is cold out here.